Good afternoon, friends. David Wright here, and I am your host of the Disruptive Innovators Champions of Digital Business podcast. And today, I am lucky enough to be joined by Runa Sori. Runa, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for being here. Pleasure, David. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course. So, Runa, for those of our listeners who may not know, can you just tell everyone a little bit about your current role? Sure. Um, I currently serve as Chief Technology Officer at First Command Financial Services. We provide uh, financial coaching to nation our nation's military families and help them in achieving their financial goals. My focus is on improving our digital capabilities and likes to our changing customer needs and focusing more towards the banking side. Of that. And love the population that you're serving as well. Very cool. I'm going to look forward to diving a little bit deeper into some of the work that you're doing. We'd like to start the episode, though, with just one piece of actionable advice you might look to leave everyone with today. This is a constant, an advice that I got, but an advice that I keep giving to younger folks uh, all the time is get out of your comfort zone. I think uh, it's so much more important to have that attitude to get out of what we already know and leap into the unknown. And that's just breaking your comfort zone. So that would be one thing. But beyond that, one uh, other thing that I I learned over the years uh, about myself or about uh, from observing others is about understand who you are. That's so much more important. What your strengths, what your weaknesses are. I think that is even more important. Two diamonds there. I'll say that when I really started getting momentum as an entrepreneur, it was always when I was flying a little bit over my skis and it was, you know, it was scary, but, you know, just kind of sitting in that discomfort coming out on the other side was always like, holy cow. You know, and sometimes I would crash into a wall, but the the lessons that I would learn coming out of it were were invaluable. And you know, what you mentioned about kind of knowing yourself or what I heard was like kind of finding out really who you are. So crucial. I like, I wish I would have done it younger in, in life, but as I did, it just, it really allowed me to be present with people and, and comfortable in my own skin. And so I think that's great advice, really great advice. Runa, let's, let's talk a little bit about you. So where did you start out and, you know, how did you get to this point that you're at in your career today? My uh, journey, David, has uh, it, it's been anything but planned right from the beginning. Uh, if I have to go back to like my high school days, everything that I planned, it would be the other side of it. Yeah, always, always. And I think um, I embraced it and I think it's it's one golden nugget in my life about having the other side of planning. Uh, it's full of trial and errors. And uh, then uh, I graduated during a recession of 2000 and found myself in between the industry where the jobless industry is what I call. I moved into information technology because that was happening and uh, there were opportunities in that area. I think that's one beautiful accident in my career path, in my professional journey. Uh, no regrets there. At all. So I started as a programmer uh, over some very many years and then eventually I decided to leap into the consulting but that was a planned effort. I uh, consciously made that decision to get into consulting because either I was too rusty in what I was doing or not understanding why I was doing what I was doing kind of a thing and uh, uh, rightfully so consulting really introduced me to the various di dimensions the industry has. Uh, from technology, from business perspective, from people perspective, from process, whatever you name it. I think it was uh, the introduction for me about the industry. And uh, more importantly, that was an area within my spectrum. I learned the right way to be a professional. Various, various uh, dimensions uh, were there uh, within that space and which I kind of got there. I always say like the folks that I know who are you know, consultant and now, you know, CIO, CTO, CDO, kind of that dual threat because, you know, as a consultant, you end up working with, you know, not just the four or five businesses that if you're a classic kind of IT, you know, individual that you've worked with over the years, you end up working with hundreds of different companies and just a lot of different experiences. Now, sitting on the other side of the table is a completely other, you know, experience in and of itself, right? So to have both those experiences, I could see how it could make you like 
a much better kind of dynamic leader. You're constantly hopping into different industry segments where, you know, if you are in one regulatory environment, then suddenly after six, seven months, you find yourself dealing with something else altogether, which is completely diametrically opposite. And I think that kind of flavor, that dimension is what I needed at that point in time to understand the complexities of being a professional. You know, and I find that our experience you know, for example, five to seven years ago in leading, you know, digital transformation efforts for retail organizations or kind of other organizations that were kind of, I don't even say ahead of the curve, but have gone through that already. And now bringing that to a lot of younger financial institutions or health systems or things of that nature, it's super valuable. It's different. And like you said, kind of the regulatory complexities or clinical and operational complexities or whatever it might be or make it different. And at the same time, being able to leverage that experience is relative and valuable. So Rita, what would you say is one of the most important things that you've learned over the course of your personal and professional career? And what was life like before learning it and after learning it? Don't try to do it all as a fun thing, because I think when we start uh, our careers, uh, we tend to kind of master. We have that urge to kind of do it all and show that what we can bring to the table. I'm I'm good at this. I'm good at that. Kind of, it, it's a young brain uh, working, uh, you know, on your strings. I guess. I think uh, that's one thing I learned. Like, uh, don't try to do it all. You know, it's more important to, like I said earlier, right? It is about understanding who you are as a person because we all have different, unique strengths, unique skills. And it's so much more important uh, stepping into the career is about what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. And once we have that clarity, you know, it's about partnering with the, with your counterparts who can complement on your weak, weak sides, but, you know, strengthen on your other areas. That is one thing, definitely, uh, you know, a learning. And the second thing is it's important to constantly unlearn what you have learned and this is a new thing that i'm actually coaching myself let me put it with because um you know if you look into the industry landscape every day is changing you know the industry is changing at a rapid pace and what has worked yesterday is definitely not working today and will not work for tomorrow be it technology be it process whatever you you can name it everything is changing and so having that mindset uh, to constantly unlearn and be okay with it and then again step into that unknown, the new thing and done again. I think that's even more important now. Yeah, I love that. It's funny, a couple hours ago, I was on the phone with the CTO and we were talking about this cloud migration project of a, a certain type of customer experience platform and the fact that his team, you know, their strategy, they like this newer platform. They're basically, the plan is just to take all their existing workflows out of the old platform and plop them into the new platform. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait, we have to throw all up these up against the wall and see like, is there a better way to do this? Like, you know, now is the time, you know, before you roll out a new platform to kind of stop and say, you know, is this really serving our customers, our colleagues, the actual, you know, consumer? Because like you're saying, things are changing so dynamically that, you know, if I'm, if I'm not doing that, I'm doing my customers a disservice. So what about one of the biggest challenges you had over the course of your career or a time that you failed something, an instance like that, but that you took away a very profound lesson from that, that moment. Well, David, I need a separate session for my failure and uh, learnings on that uh, for sure. But uh, I credit those uh, challenges and failures or however we define it to who I am today. I think there were great lessons. No textbook or no university could have taught me those. But in, just to summarize a typical challenge that I still see today, it's about from a professional angle, the constant challenge that I see is bringing business and technology together. You know, today when I talk to my peers or even industry peers for that matter, uh, half of the problem is solved because everybody understands technology and business, you know, they are at an intersection now. Uh, they cannot be separated. They go together. So that challenge, I think, has done done. Uh, at least that understanding is there which is easy. But I think when we are trying to bring about these big changes, enterprise new changes, bring, you know, called digital transformation, AI revolution, you know, label it. I think it is still prevalent out there. And it's a constant rhythm where, you know, bringing that cohesive, collaborative mindset that it's an enterprise level effort and everybody is involved in it. 
that is still a challenge. In my personal space, I mean, within the last, uh, I would say five years, the other one that I see is competing priorities. While this first part is already conquered, we have a second part, which is about prioritization, right? You have constant priorities going on, and then it's a tug of war. But then we're competing for the same set of resources, talent, which is another big industry problem that we all are facing about having the right talent. Uh, so these are some of the things, I think, uh, which are bubbling to the top. I love that the the first point you brought up about the business and technology. Another example, I Wednesday and Thursday, we were in all day discovery meetings with a fairly large bank. And it was so refreshing. The executive stakeholder ended up bringing in over the course of two days, the entire retail banking team, e-banking, lending, mortgage, like all the HR operations, all the different external and internal groups that touch consumer experience, collaboration, communications, and some folks were more engaged than others, right? But they all showed up. And I'll tell you from a, from an organizational, because I was explaining this to my team, because my team was kind of like, we got to meet with, it was it was hundreds of people over those two days. Like, we got to meet with all these people. And I was like, guys, listen, just trust me. I think it'll be worthwhile. And at the end of the two days, everybody was like, holy cow, because not only did we get a ton out of it, learning, really understanding what they were going through and how the solutions and ideas that we could bring to the table could benefit them. But past that, from an organizational change management standpoint, now we made that connection and we got to, they felt heard. So now as we go through these initiatives, you know, they can really get into it because they see that their, you know, vision for things is actually being fulfilled. You know, it was very cool. So I actually want to get into, Bruna, your current role and, and, you know, your experience. Before we do, though, uh, I like to ask uh, just about your favorite book or either that you've read currently or all time, your choice. Okay. Also late, I've been really occupied with some of my kids' books, but I managed to get hold of one book, beautiful one, uh, which is uh, Useful Delusions by Nishankar Redantam. I'm halfway through, I'm not done, but I love the concept. The concept is about, you know, having, you know, delusions are bad, but then delusions are also useful. You know, how you can train your brain towards a positivity and then, uh, you know, how to conquer your challenges, whatever challenges, personal, professional, wherever. So it's about having that delusions. I call it dating you, but the concept was very powerful and I'm loving the book. Yeah, I have to check that out. Every time in my life that I've been delusional, it hasn't been a good thing, so... I'll have to re reframe them. Nice. My, my. Yeah. Nice. I, I think it's about uh, coaching your uh, own brain, but it's a beautiful one. I'm happy. With yeah, it. I will check it out. So Marita, you're the you're the chief technology officer at First Command. You know, you've been there for a, a little bit now. What is your vision for technology based off the overarching mission of the organization? So uh, like I said, uh, we cater to our nation's military families. And our goal is to help them achieve their financial goals. That's the foundation. And uh, I want to see our company as a digital first. So we can serve them better. Uh, we can serve a changing clientele with the new generations coming in and their demands and the new ask from them. So I want to see the company stand at the forefront of digital transformation and being that digital first company catering to their needs. Love that. So what are some of the initiatives that maybe roll up to that? Like what are the, what are some of the things that you all are working on that you might be able to share? Yeah, my current focus is primarily towards the banks, uh, digital transformation, so defining that bank of the future. David, you know, the customer of yesterday was very comfortable just walking into the branch, uh, talking to a teller, you know, seeking some advice there, you know, whether it's about investment sometimes or whether it's about just day-to-day -day activities, whatever it be, they liked it. They loved it and they were comfortable with that. But today, the customer is changing. The needs are changing at a rapid pace. It's not about change, but how fast as they are changing. You know, the influence is from social media and you know, all over the place, all different things that are coming to the place. And I think, um, uh, so that is the pivot where they want full control of their finances, their investments, everything in their path. And uh, in order to be able to cater to this changing uh, customer cycle, 
I think it is so much more uh, important for us to be digital first. So that's one thing. But having said that, uh, based on our company's mission and vision, we are relationship oriented and we're not deviating from that uh, at all. So keeping that relationship oriented service to our clientele, but also giving them this digital alternatives. So this is where our transformation focus is completely. I love to see that, you know, because, you know, when we work with uh, an organization like yours or a, like a community bank, how do you maintain that that personal relationship and how do you bring that highly personalized, radically convenient experience to the digital experience? Whereas the, the person who classically really liked that face to face interaction, even they're like, oh, wow, this is this is great. It knows who I am. It's thinking about my needs before I even voice them and. I have my person I can go to, and I also have this thing, like you said, kind of in the palm of my hand that can just handle a lot of those maybe smaller queries or, or even, you know, more significant things if I choose to leverage it. Especially if the focus is on Gen Z's and the new clientele that's coming to the picture, they're very impatient. I think uh, that's another, uh, you know, real important factor to be considered. So, Marina, what about some of the biggest challenges and you you kind of touched on a couple of these earlier but what what are some of the biggest challenges your organization is facing as a as a business today uh digital transformation david is an enterprise goal one good thing about our company is there is uh, unity in that understanding that we are all in it together and we have to tread along together to kind of make uh, these big changes so that's a very beautiful you know, thing uh, most companies backing along. So that's not a challenge for us at this point. But the biggest challenge definitely is talent. Uh, like I said, the technology is changing so fast that by the time you hire, you kind of decide and, you know, everything is again changing. So that is definitely a universal challenge. I think it's not just our company. Everybody is facing that. But coming to delivering uh, through this transformation, the challenge that we have is redefining our processes, redefining our technology footprint, and uh, that that's a big task. And then transforming all people, process and technology and re-coaching people aspect. So those are some of the things that we are actively kind of looking into at this point. But at the same time, aligning our business partners also redefine how their business practices are. You know, when you're talking about digital transformation, you're talking about a complete new experience a complete uh, new customer engagement practice. And then the processes of the business, I call it business re-engineering practice. I think uh, what the way we architected our business is not going to help with this technology transformation. I think it has to come start from the business and then technology and then uh, to the client experience. They're all kind of three uh, important nuggets there. I love that you brought that up because it's so true. For example, the way that banks communicate with third parties, right? Like sometimes, you know, people think of a retail bank and you have the consumer, but there's a lot of third parties that you have to hand deal with in, in lending or this or that. And when you talk to the folks at a bank that is still kind of walking down the path of digital transformation, you know, people are just texting on their cell phone or they're doing this and it's not really tracked anywhere. And that's just an, like a small, silly example of a process that if we're talking about enterprise digital transformation, that's an opportunity right there, likely for automation, collaboration, like, but I have to be able to kind of wireframe out all those different processes. And it's, it's a lot. I mean, it definitely is that it requires kind of enrollment and alignment and the buy-in, which is, it's pretty cool that, that you guys have that. I would say that's one of actually the the most crucial parts is that the team behind someone like yourself is actually willing, you know, if they've picked up the key of willingness, then you're already kind of on your way. But yeah, it can be a lot. Ruta, what about maybe some of the, the best practices that you and your team follow? Any any just uh, that come to mind that you'd recommend to our other you know, IT and digital leaders out there? Uh, sure, David. And this, is, this goes back to my earlier answer, I think, where, you know, all those bad experiences and everything actually shape who you become uh, because you learn how to be and how not to be. I think um, I have uh, always been... Uh, 
believe in being a leader, a team player, where um, you know you're creating the culture of trust. Trust is so much more important than bringing new technology or processes or anything into uh, your team. It's your peers or you know anybody for that matter that you're working with. And I think creating that culture of trust, an open space where your ideas can flourish or anybody can bring any kind of idea, having a healthy debate that is super important for me and I've always led teams like that but you know it's the trust is not just downwards always that's what I keep telling I mean this is one thing uh, I talk to my peers trust is always upwards and downwards both ways you know it, it's a simple statement but it, it is very deep if people have to spend time to think about it you know having when you have both upwards and downwards trust believe me no matter how complex the project is, no matter how you know daunting that deliverable experience, you know what do you have to deliver? It's it's a joyful experience by the time you reach uh, the finish line. And I experienced it myself. I experienced it so many times myself, and I stick to that mantra all the time. It's so true. I mean, I I like to think that we have that as an organization, and I I've also had the opportunity to work with organizations that are like that, that have leaders that promote that kind of culture. And I really, I've said it on the podcast before, and I'll say it again, like to create a culture of innovation requires that that's a requirement, right? Because if people are walking on eggshells and they're afraid to make a mistake and you can't innovate, it's just, it, it, it's just not conducive to to that. And and I love that you brought up joy too, because if I can create a an atmosphere of joy in the workplace, I mean, that's tremendous, right? Where people are generally excited to go to work, to solve a problem, to to come together. Um, because ultimately it's all about the people. Like the comment that you made about talent, right, is not unique. It's it's pretty much almost every podcast ep- episode somebody mentions talent because it's hard and it's changing and so being able to create a culture because what and and then past that one of the biggest people issues it and digital leaders deal with other than recruiting new talent is keeping talent you know attrition is a huge huge battle um but the more that you can create a culture like it sounds like the culture that you guys have created the higher likelihood people are going to want to stay because they are experiencing joy in the workplace. And there's another uh, side effect, positive side effect of this, um, uh, you know, environment that we create, that we just spoke about, is about, you know, when you create that ecosystem, David, automatically you don't have to really work hard to create that common objective, the common goal that everybody is, uh, you know, going after. You know, your rally cry towards that one mission and one goal is a side effect of this environment. So it, it creates by itself, uh, you know, that that. That is the small, uh, you know, nugget that everybody misses out. It, they think this is more about people. Yes, it is about people. But then once you conquer that piece and establish this, then you actually get the practical benefits out of it. That is true. That that makes sense. We're in a couple, couple last questions for you. First would be, where do you see the financial services banking industry going in the future with an understanding that you don't have a crystal ball? And or what do you think will be the some of the biggest changes as time passes? I'm sure you've heard this thousand times so far, uh, AI. Uh, but I think we are in the midst of an AI revolution for sure. AI, it, it's disrupting not just financial services, it's disrupting healthcare, it's disrupting, uh, you know, every other industry. I mean, every industry segment that uh, we can talk about. If you think about and uh, look into just within the last a couple months if I have to lean towards the industry and see the kind of new products, AI enhanced products that are being created and services um, that are being created which are purely simplifying our experiences. From the financial services side uh, aspect of it, I think I, I look at fintech actively, you know, how it's already disrupting. It's dominating the world of banking for sure. I mean, the changes that have happened at least in the last three, four years, it started early on, but I think the prominent changes have been only in the last three, four years where we are seeing those changes. You know, it's just uprooting the industry from the core, how we conduct our business. And it's it's a reality. It's not a hype uh, that we are experiencing. So whether embedded finance, uh, you talk about open banking, you talk about blockchain, you know, these are uh, very sophisticated, uh, you know, changes that are happening, but they are also promising. So these are some of the things I'm closely watching out of personal interest and curiosity for sure. But these will change uh, banking, financial services, 
from the call without there's no doubt yeah, so this this is great stuff. The last question that I would have for you is just if you could go back five or ten years in time, what advice would you give your younger self? Surround yourself with positive people. But it's so much more important to surround with uh, positive people, both professionally and personally. Because if this was a newbie, somebody entering their career, their really uh, right phase in the life, it is going to change who you big down both ways. So my advice, uh, if I have to go back then, I would definitely see some eliminations I should have and uh, some additions I should have in terms of people and friendships and, uh, you know, mentors as well. That would be my five to ten years back if I have to get on a time machine. Bruna, it was an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much, David. It was a pleasure. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. And we will catch you all next week.